Hi there, Mouseketeers. Welcome to the Disneyland beat where our toes tap to a Disneyland drum. And we always whistle while we work. Do you love riding Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blasters at Disneyland? We sure do. It's a fun ride that the entire family can enjoy, and it works as both a shooting gallery and a dark ride. But did you know Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blasters was not a welcome addition for lots of Disney Park fans? Come on into the parks with us as we explore the history of Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blasters. Like, subscribe, and stick around. Disneyland is your land. <laughs> Come seek an adventure at your pirates, eh? Make the jump to life speed. Hi, this is Amy. And I'm TC. Today, the five versions of Buzz Lightyear's Disney Park ride that combines a shooting gallery with a traditional dark ride are a staple of Tomorrowlands around the world. For the past 30 years, young children and the young at heart have enjoyed blasting off to Planet Z to battle the evil Emperor Zerg, but the ride had a lot of selling to do to win over audiences when it first arrived. The first versions of the ride to be built, Buzz Lightyear's Space Ranger Spin at Walt Disney World and Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blasters at Tokyo Disneyland were both designed to utilize existing infrastructure structure and provide a fun all-ages attraction for Tomorrowland. When Tomorrowland at Walt Disney World opened in 1971, there really wasn't much to do. You could stay in Tomorrowland and ride the Grand Prix Raceway, a fun but much less exciting version of Autopia. Or you could board the Skyway and leave Tomorrowland to go to Fantasyland. As a result, Tomorrowland earned a reputation of having much less to do than the other richly detailed lands in the park. Disney promised its guests that it would add new attractions. Construction soon began on large projects, adding in Space Mountain, the Wedway People Mover, soon to be renamed the Tomorrowland Transit Authority, or TTA, and a new Omni Mover dark ride called If You Had Wings were added to the land. If You Had Wings was a pleasant dark ride sponsored by Eastern Airlines, and it highlighted many of the places that you could travel to using the airline service. It had several charming scenes. But like many of the commercial travel-themed attractions found in early Walt Disney World and Epcot, it just wasn't that exciting. And what Allura did have faded quickly, and it just didn't draw consistent crowds. Eastern Airlines was fated to go out of business and drop their sponsorship, and the ride changed names to If You Could Fly in 1987, keeping the ride the same, minus the product placement. But not too long after, it was refurbished completely around the original Omnimover system. This time, Delta sponsored the ride, and it was called Delta Dream Flight. Delta Dream Flight was themed to the history of the golden age of aviation, from barnstormers to long ocean flights, and the ride was far more interesting and exciting than its predecessor, and it did result in a slight increase in crowds. But it failed to draw in large, consistent audiences, and it rarely had more than a 10 minute wait. So eventually, Disney began to look for a replacement. It is coming! It is, it is coming! <laughs> In October of 1997, Disney announced that they would be creating a new dark ride, a shooting gallery hybrid based on the upcoming Pixar film Toy Story 2. The ride was being developed in conjunction with the film and would ultimately open before the film was released in November of 1999. The news of a Pixar-themed ride coming to Walt Disney World was met with dismay by many hardcore Disney Park fans at the time. Today, the Pixar brand is synonymous with Disney, having provided us with decades of amazing films and beloved characters. But in 1997 and 1998, Pixar had only put out Toy Story and A Bug's Life. And though both were big hits, having these properties inside Disney parks, especially a castle park, was quite new. The only other third-party company to do so to date was Lucasfilm with the Indiana Jones Adventure and Star Tours, but this worked on another level as these were live action. Having Pixar characters which were so new and unconventional on the same stage as Mickey, Minnie, and Pals was met with a great deal of opposition to those who did not want to see third-party additions to the parks. And of course today this has become standard practice. There's Lucasfilm, but there's also dozens of Pixar-themed attractions and Marvel attractions with more coming. However, Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin fared well once the ride opened. It was met with an overall positive response and was pretty close to an instant hit. The new attraction makes the guests feel like they're the size of a toy and sends them into space to help Buzz Lightyear defend the funny little green men's planet from invasion by the evil Zerg. Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin at Walt Disney World uses the same basic layout and ride system as Delta Dream Flight and If You Had Wings. The first version that was built at the Magic Kingdom is fairly unique, both in order to fit the building that it was put into and because it was developed before the film was actually released. It has enough of a shooter element to keep you engaged and allow for some friendly competition while having enough dark ride elements to keep it interesting, even if you never pull the trigger. 
Another fun thing to consider is that when the ride opened in 1998, guests actually got to see Buzz Lightyear's arch nemesis Zerg for the first time. Right now, poised at the edge of the galaxy, Emperor Zerg has been secretly building a weapon with the destructive capacity to annihilate an entire planet. It was also the first dark ride to include a joystick, allowing you to orient your ride vehicle in any direction you want throughout the ride. It also introduced a new style of animatronic to the park. A life-size Buzz Lightyear greets you in the queue, filling you in on your mission objective with Star Command. The facial features are provided by small projectors inside the body that create more detailed motion than traditional animatronics have been able to achieve to that point. Now they've gone on to be used in many more attractions, though mechanical technology has caught up. The version of the ride we know and love at Disneyland, Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blasters, is a clone of the Tokyo Disneyland attraction which opened in 2004. This version of the ride is built off of lessons learned during the development of the original and became the pattern for several more. It also had the benefit of utilizing more developed characters. Toy Story 2 had come out, as well as a standalone animated film that was all about Buzz Lightyear and his adventures battling Zerg. This version adds a great deal of dialogue and a more cohesive narrative to the ride with three distinct sections. A flight in space to the little green men's planet, exploring the strange planet Z, and a final showdown with the big space boss, Zerg. Removable blasters were also added in this version so you could aim at the targets a bit more easily. The original version has them attached to the ride vehicles and it's a bit more limiting. Overall, it was a great success. Disney had struck upon a formula that allowed them to affordably convert the existing 360-degree style theater it had in two other parks into clones of the new attraction. The film and the round attractions, though revolutionary in their time, were starting to feel outdated. The project also worked well in Tomorrowland and included the intellectual properties of the now incredibly popular Pixar Studios. Over a three-year period, the attraction was installed at four Disney castle parks. At Disneyland, it replaced the Circle Vision Theater that had been sitting empty since the Rocket Rods closed. It opened in 2005, and the ride is still running strong today. At Disneyland Paris, it replaced their theater in the round Visionarium. The Disneyland Paris version, named Buzz Lightyear Laser Blast, has the same layout and key show scenes as the others. However, it does have some unique transition scenes that are a lot of fun. And another clone of the ride was included with Hong Kong Disneyland when it opened in 2005. However, it has since been renovated and changed into Ant-Man and the Wasp Nano Battle, the only version of the ride to be changed into something else. Disney's newest park, Shanghai Disneyland, which opened in 2016, includes a version of the ride called Buzz Lightyear Planet Rescue. This ride is in the same exact style as the rest of them with just as many practical elements, but the entire color scheme is different and the narrative focuses more on shooting a number of large robots sent by Zerg and lacks the variety of the original versions. The Disneyland version uses warm, bright, fluorescent colors to paint its stunning props and it places them in front of cool, blue, and dark backgrounds, getting the greatest benefit from the UV lighting that floods the room. The ride is really funny. Buzz Lightyear's melodramatic seriousness is funny, and Zerg turned out to be a really hilarious character, both in the film. You killed my father. No, Buzz. I am your father. No! <laughs> and in the ride. And the ride fosters friendly competition. Many folks have developed strategies to find every high value and even hidden target to get the maximum possible score. The ride also offered you a new perk at Disneyland and still does. There's a free ride photo taken on every cycle that you can email to yourself using a touchscreen kiosk. However, it seems like they've not replaced the camera since 2005 and it is a super pixelated image. The ride has its shortcomings. The blasters can be tricky, especially for young ones to aim, and they all seem to aim slightly differently. And it certainly is not one of the more sophisticated or complex rides at Disneyland. But Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blaster stands alone from other interactive park attractions. It is still a dark ride, with lots of conventional, if simple, but well done practical scenery. And as an adult, it's what I appreciate the most about this ride. The whole ride glows like other classic park dark rides, such as Winnie the Pooh, Roger Rabbit, or Alice in Wonderland, and the stakes are mild. It's a fun, lighthearted ride you can sit back and enjoy. It also represents a ride format that we have not seen repeated as the Disney parks evolve, making it fairly unique. Newer interactive rides like Toy Story Midway Mania or Web Slingers seem to favor screens over practical scenery. Even the makeover of Buzz Lightyear into Ant-Man and the Wasp Nano Battle saw a significant reduction in the practical elements 
votes in favor of screen work. We wonder what the long-term future of the ride will be. It's possible some of the many versions will evolve into something else. At Disneyland, all or most of Tomorrowland could be overhauled eventually, or the parks just might move away from the practical, spacey shooting gallery in favor of screen work. But with the five existing versions around the world, we know that we're still going to be able to enjoy this amazing attraction for a long time to come. Thanks for joining us. See you real soon, Mouseketeers. See you real soon.